Alrighty, you guys. So today we're going to hang out, do some makeup, just chill, basically. I feel like although I posted once a week consistently throughout the months of June and July, I still feel very out of the loop because... I haven't been working like as much as I want to. So this is like my, hey, what's up? How you doing? Also, you guys, I got my brush collection down to like the only brushes I ever use. I'm considering doing a video about that. So if you'd be interested in that, give me a thumbs up. For brow powder, I'm gonna use It Cosmetics Brow Powder in the color Transforming Taupe. It's pretty much the only brow powder I've been using for the past two years, I think. So today I thought I would kind of talk to you guys about the future of my channel, things I'm working on, and also show you guys some new techniques I've been using in my makeup routine lately that y'all have been responding really well to. You keep telling me how much better it looks, which I agree. This is the Urban Decay. It's called the Brow Endowed. I love this stuff. I think I've talked about it in a few videos recently, but can't stress how dope it is. I don't know if I've ever seen something like this, so if you guys have any dupes, please let me know because I'm actually kind of concerned that they're gonna discontinue it just because I love it so hard. So I just got back from the gym and I don't know what it is. You guys will have to tell me if you've ever experienced anything similar to this. But when I switched the time of day that I go to the gym, it's like changed my whole life for the better. That's a dramatic statement, but there's a lot of reasons why and I'll give you a few right now. Number one, I kind of kept noticing this thing that was happening to me when I film. I'm gonna be working out of the Kristen Dominique Latte palette and the Jaclyn Hill OG palette. These are pretty much the only palettes I use anymore. I swear, I pull for them all the time. So anyway, I was noticing when I was filming, I kind of would go through this thing where I just felt kind of anxious while I was filming. I felt very stressed out and like it was a lot. I don't know why, don't ask. It's, I mean, it kind of is a lot. You know, you gotta set your light up, so you gotta get your camera going, you gotta get your camera settings right, you gotta get the angles right, you gotta get your sound set up, you gotta get yourself ready, you gotta get your words together. Like, it's not not a lot, but lately I felt like overwhelmed by it. So I started going to the gym before I film, which has never ever been really my shtick. I was going at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. for a long time, and now I switched it to 7 a.m. So by eight o'clock in the morning, I have worked out, had breakfast, got my day going, and when I sit down to film, I feel like I have no nervous energy. I just feel ready to kind of take on the day and do the damn thing, which has been very very nice. Another really big benefit of it, I have to say, is it's made my weight loss goals that I have for myself this year so much easier to attain, which it's really funny and you guys might laugh at me. I don't really care. I'm weird. Hi. Hi, I'm Whitney and I'm weird. So I believe in like tarot cards and energy and spirit guides. Like I'm super into that kind of stuff. And I did a tarot card pull at the beginning of the year. And one of the things that came from it was basically the understanding that I needed to quit being so precious about my routine because I can be, I can be very like, no, this is the time that I do this and this is the time I will always do this. Now I do like structure and I do like a routine. I respond very well to it. I hadn't really given myself a chance to like examine that and figure out if it was working, but the tarot cards told me that that's what I needed to do. And I did recently start kind of switching up a lot of things in my life and the gym was one of them and honestly putting myself in a position where I am at the gym before I even have time to think about how much I don't want to do it. That was the big problem with me scheduling my gym time for so late in the day like 4 p.m. 7 p.m. By the time it rolled around I was just like I don't want to do anything like I really don't want to do this today and I would just talk myself out of it more often than not more often than I should be considering I have this goal but now that I've switched it to 7 a.m. like it is just so much better I've been so much more consistent I'm so it's just the best thing life lesson for you guys I guess is a uh, switch up your teens shake things up sometimes it's definitely for the better so speaking of the gym Thought I would tell you guys a little bit about my weight loss journey, how it's going, what I've learned, blah, blah, blah. It kind of ties into a video I want to make, but I 
Don't know if I'm going to because honestly, I don't know what I would call it. I don't know if anyone has gone through this, but I've learned through YouTube and through connecting with you guys that if I'm going through something or I think something or feel something, I am literally never the only one. So I put on some weight. I mean, we all go through it. I'm a woman, I'm getting older. I'll be 34 in February, so. My body is just trying to like figure out what it wants to do, I guess, in my 30s. And truthfully, the last little bit of my 20s, I gained some weight. I probably gained about 40 pounds. I'm not going to lie. I haven't really been on camera the size that I've been most of my life, but I gained the weight and it sucked. Like I, I know exactly why I gained it. I know exactly how I gained it. I was really unhappy at the time and obviously I turn to food for comfort. And ever since I gained that weight a few years ago, like I said, it's probably been about four or five years, I have fluctuated with my weight so much. Like I'll get really focused and lose the same 15 to 20 pounds over and over and over and over again. And I don't know, like after I broke my ankle last year and I had actually planned to lose the weight last year, like I was ready to do it, which is you really have to be ready to do something like this. But I broke my ankle and then I just kind of like wallowed and didn't lose any weight, probably gained more. Anyway, so far this year, I don't weigh myself. I have a very unhealthy relationship with the scale. I've just been measuring myself with like measuring tape. And so far this year, hold on, I've been tracking it in a note. I've lost about four inches around my waist. I've lost about three inches off my arms. Like I've lost, weight. I just don't know how much because I won't weigh myself. Now I do lift weights. I do CrossFit and I have for a long time. It's my preferred way to work out. So I can't really trust the scale because there's a good chance that the number might not fluctuate very much because I'm building muscle as well. This year I have like a few little goals I'm working on. Some of them are work. A lot of them are work related. Let's get real. I've learned how much I was neglecting that part of me for such a long time. And I've learned that the things I was doing to kind of cope with my new body that I wasn't happy with just were really working against me, if I'm being honest. Like the way I was dressing, the way I was wearing my hair was all to kind of make me look smaller in comparison because I wasn't comfortable in this body and I didn't know how to, I don't know how to dress it, like I said. And I started this weight loss journey. I genuinely I genuinely don't know why I was dragging my feet for so long because it hasn't even been that hard. I mean, there are definite changes that you have to make in order to achieve a goal that's just the way it is. The actual process of losing weight this year has not been difficult for me. And I don't know if that's down to the fact that I was like really ready to do it this time, or if it's just that I found something that works for me, but it's just been so interesting. And one of the other things I've learned, I was really using makeup and hair and cosmetic procedures, which I don't have a lot of them, but I was planning on getting more things done that now I don't think I'm gonna do anymore. But anyway, I think I was doing all that because it felt like something I could control. And makeup always fits, you know, with the body size that I had and how unhappy I was with it, I couldn't even get a little bit excited about the idea of going shopping for clothing. Number one, like I said, I didn't even know how to dress my body at that size. And number two, I just would get, the few times I did go shopping, I would just get so frustrated at the numerical indication of how much weight I had gained. There is a certain size that I like to be at. That's the goal I'm working towards. Like when I say I'm not weighing myself, I'm measuring myself. But every time I would try clothes on and they would be drastically bigger than the size that I felt comfortable at, it would just frustrate me. So I sunk like all of my money, any expendable income that I had into my makeup collection because it did make me feel like I was at least trying to stay like presentable and still like care about my appearance to an extent. But I was doing so much, so much to compensate for obviously how insecure I felt. That is the most eye-opening thing that I've discovered since I have lost a little bit of weight is I just feel really good in my skin now and I'm also just really proud of myself for doing it. That's another interesting thing about weight loss is you set a goal and then you see yourself taking a step to it every single day. Like every time I get up and go to the gym or every time I make a decision to eat something clean and on track with like my macros, which is how I'm eating right now to do the weight loss thing. I'm just like, good job, Whitney. 
do it girl i want to know if any of you guys have maybe put on a little bit of weight which there's nothing wrong with putting on weight you guys it's totally fine i don't feel like i owe the world skinny you know what i mean like i am who i am for better or for worse and i can accept it honestly i didn't realize how insecure i was until recently and now that i've seen that in me i don't ever want to feel that way again never mind how i look i don't want to feel like I'm not putting my best foot forward or being the, the most authentic version of myself that I want to be. But I'm just wondering, have any of you guys gained a little bit of weight and maybe noticed that you start spending a lot more money on makeup, on treatments, on hair, because it's almost like you're compensating a little bit. So as I said, I'm like redoing my whole wardrobe and I mean it. Like I literally cleared out my closet of shoes, purses, clothes. I'm talking, it was tons and tons of stuff. A uh, annoyingly large amount of it that still had tags on it. But nonetheless, it's gone now. I donated 80% of it and 20% I went and sent to a consignment shop. But I have been rebuilding my wardrobe piece by piece and I'm kind of doing it in sections. I'm kind of starting with accessories, so shoes and purses, outerwear and jeans because I'm sure I'm gonna lose more weight, like damn it, <laughs> that's the goal. I plan on losing about four more inches in the next two months. It's gonna be, it's gonna be rough, but I'm very dedicated and determined to do so. So it's as good as done. But uh, I've been rebuilding my wardrobe using Poshmark and no, this video is not sponsored or anything like that. I did do a sponsored video with them at the beginning of the year. And I feel like the focus of that video was kind of introducing you guys to Poshmark as a seller as a way to make money. And I have sold, oh gosh, just got eyelash glue all over my eye. I have sold some stuff on Poshmark, but I gotta tell y'all, I don't think the selling portion of it is nearly as exciting to me as the buying portion of it because I have gotten, gotten? I have gotten? I have purchased so many dope things that are extremely expensive that I've gotten for half off or less. I didn't just go into my shopping like blind. I had very specific list of things that I was looking to get. So simple things like a dark pair of jeans, a light pair of jeans, a white t-shirt, new jacket, certain types of shoes. Like I had like a list because I'm trying to build a wardrobe that I can get a lot more use out of than I was getting out of my old one. And pieces that I wanted to get are a little more expensive because I wanted them to be high quality and last a long time and all that good stuff. Dang, it's a big old glob of eyelash glue. Holy crap. So I was squirreling away my pennies and getting ready to go shopping. And I wanted this one thing in particular and it was just like really expensive and I just didn't know if I could justify the cost of it, so I went ahead and checked on Poshmark to see if they had it, and they did, which just kind of sent me down a rabbit hole of amazing savings, and I have purchased, a, oh God, about 10 or 11 things since I started with them, and I've loved everything that I've got. Now, there is a trick to it. You cannot return anything that you buy to the seller unless it's not as listed. So let's say, for example, if you ordered a Celine bag off of Poshmark and you got it and you were able to prove that it wasn't real or it was in much worse condition than was shown on the app when you ordered it, you could return it then. But like if it doesn't fit or if you don't like the way it looks in person just because you decided you're just not into it anymore, then you're stuck with it. You can put it back on the app though to sell yourself. So far, there's nothing I've got that I can't make work. And I've gotten so many things that I was in the market for, as I said. And for example, one of the things I am purchasing from Poshmark is shoes. I ordered two pairs of Stuart Weitzman shoes. Those are typically around five, six, four, five, six hundred dollars shoes. And I've gotten two pairs off the site for about a hundred bucks. And they're in perfect condition. They fit amazing. They're beautiful. I also ordered some jeans. I got a pair of rag and bone jeans, a pair of page denim, two pairs of Good American, all these jeans 
will run you over $150. I got all of them for about half, if not less than half in some cases. Really quick, also, I'm going to underpaint. If you guys don't know what this is, it's the technique I've been using lately for my makeup. Basically, what you're gonna do is everything that you typically do on top of your foundation, you do underneath it. Danessa Myricks is a makeup artist who is kind of famous for this technique. She does it amazingly well. I'm still learning, so trust me when I say this is gonna look a little weird for a second, but it all comes together in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and contour using the Fenty Matchstick in the color Amber. I've tried doing this with a warmer shade before and it made me look really orange at the end. So doing it with a super cool one hopefully won't do that. I'm just passing down a word to the wise. I know that everybody knows about this app. I don't know how many of you guys actually use it, but I can tell you for sure that there's a very small chance moving forward that I will ever buy anything full retail without checking Poshmark first. Now, the one place in particular I do have to be extremely careful with is with shirts because I'm very busty. I'm like a 36 triple D. So I can't really do anything by way of shirts or anything like that off that site. Outerwear, jackets, things like that are fine. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't see a, a scenario where I'm just gonna go spend you know, pay full price for stuff that I can get off the site. Literally the rag and bone jeans that I bought, which are usually like $200 jeans, they still have the tags on them. Remember how I said I donated a bunch of clothes and some of them still had tags on them? It happens. People end up with stuff they never wear and it might be exactly what you're in the market for. The concealer part, I tend to do really close to my skin tone or closer to my skin tone because if I go too bright, it just, doesn't look really good and you can always brighten it up later. So about building a new wardrobe, you guys, it is such a different experience to like consciously build a wardrobe than it is to just kind of willy nilly kind of impulse shop or wait for an occasion to buy clothing. Doing it with a lot of intention has really helped me realize, it's really helped me realize, it's just the year of realizing things. It's helped me realize how much I was avoiding clothing and style. Like I said, I just kind of feel like I've been hiding with makeup and hair and that kind of being the focus of my appearance and not really bringing clothes into it at all. So doing it now is just so different because I'm older and you just don't have the same taste that maybe you have when you were younger. You might be trying to look a little more sophisticated, a little bit more worldly. I don't know, you do you. But I've learned like what my style actually is and I've also learned how disproportionate my relationship with money and my appearance is. Like for example, I made a comment in a video not too long ago where I said that I remember a time not so long ago when I would have completely just scoffed at the idea of a lipstick being $60 or $50 that would have just seemed bananas to me and now I got like 20 lipsticks that are worth 50 bucks. This is why I was asking if any of you guys have felt anything like this where you kind of get into this makeup thing and it's kind of funner, maybe even a little bit easier to shop for than clothing. So you have no clothing budget, really. You're not prioritizing it anyway. But on top of that, your perception of what you should spend your dollar on changes. Like for example, I could go and drop $200 at Sephora in a, the blink of an eye if I really wanted to. Like I don't, it, it's not unheard of to do so. But like whenever I see a $200 price tag on a jacket or a pair of shoes, that just seems insane to me, regardless of the fact, I mean, everyone has different budgets, everyone has different lifestyles, I get that, but regardless of the fact that I will spend that $200 on something that will expire, that I already have 45,000 of, I was just sticker shocked by the idea of spending that kind of money on something that ostensibly I would use 
forever. Like I said, that's kind of my goal. I'm trying to build a wardrobe around pieces that are really timeless, really classic that I can get a lot of use out of. And I want really well made quality pieces on top of that. For foundation, I'm gonna mix MAC Face and Body with Charlotte Silbury. This is called the Light Wonder Foundation. This stuff is glowy as hell. Like it is beautiful, but it is super glowy. <laughs> And um, I have to kind of dilute it with something. This isn't exactly matte either, MAC Face and Body. It's a classic. If you've never used it, you should definitely try it out. But these two together give me, in my opinion, a very good glowy natural finish. I guess what I'm getting at is I'm a little shocked by how apprehensive I have been over the past few years and in investing a little bit of time and money into clothing and into my style because like I said, I was letting makeup and hair carry the brunt of the legwork there. And I think that is why my makeup and hair for so long have been so rowdy and just too much and I'm over it. Like, I can't believe I wore extensions for as long as I did. I can't believe that I wanted my makeup to be so flawless and perfect and matte and really just kind of painted on. But I think that's what happens. That's why I'm kind of asking you guys if you see any parallels in what I'm describing and your own personal kind of style evolution. Did you notice any changes with how you approach other aspects of your appearance once you got really into makeup? So now I have foundation on and even though I had all that underpainting on you can't really see I mean you can see a little bit you're supposed to be able to see a little bit where the lines are but it's nothing like what I was doing before when I would apply my foundation and then really get in there and apply that cream contour and then a powder contour this is under my makeup so it looks like it's under my skin a little bit more and then on top of that Doing all the concealing underneath my makeup has made it so that I just don't wear a lot of foundation. I poured all of this out onto my palette and I've used almost none of it because I just don't need that much. Both of these foundations, the Light Wonder and the Face and, face and Body, gosh, and the Face and Body are just in general much more dewy coverages, light, sheer, glowy. And it just really makes your skin look like it's actual skin. I don't know how it's picking up on camera, but I don't think I'll ever go back. Such a, such a pretty appearance in person as well. So I just set underneath my eyes and the center of my face with my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish powder. And I'm just going to let everything else just kind of hang out and set before I apply any more powder. If I do apply any more powder, that is. And I'm just going to move on to my lash line. Off camera, I put... Urban Decay Primer Potion on my lower lash line. I used to use this all over my lid, but now I just use a really thin concealer and I've just moved to using this on the lash line area because let me tell you something, if I don't prime this area, it runs and it's a hot mess. So if you're having problems with your mascara, your eyeliner, or your eyeshadow moving underneath here, take a proper eyeshadow primer and just dot a little bit of it under the eye. I swear to God, it makes a huge difference. One of the things I always struggle with when I do chit chat get readies with me is I turn the camera off sometimes so I can do parts of my makeup that I don't have to edit out later because the video will be super long if I don't. But then I forget what the last thing I said was. So I think I was talking about clothes, how buying a lot of makeup kind of hindered me from putting that as a priority. And I'm here to tell you guys that I'm gonna be taking it a lot more seriously and really just focusing on enhancing other things, which kind of leads me to my next point, which is about like cosmetic surgery and procedures. I have had a little bit of work done. I will say that I think the beauty industry or the beauty community has a little bit of a hand in why I initially was drawn to cosmetic procedures on my face. I might still, I'm probably always going to do Botox because I don't, I just don't see the harm in it. It dissolves and it's also preventative and it's just kind of keeping the youthful, <laughs> the useful look going for me, whatever. But there's other stuff I was considering doing and I don't know if I'm going to anymore or at least if I do, it's probably not gonna be anytime soon. And even if it is, it will not be to the kind of extreme that I was planning on doing it in before. Because like I said, I think I'm just kind of 
learning that I have truly been hiding behind makeup as kind of the thing that makes me feel good about myself because I didn't feel good about myself in other areas before. And an extension of the makeup thing is just my face in general. Everybody has those things about themselves that they know are kind of like their best feature. Some people have great legs, some people have great arms, some people have great eyes, great lips. For me, it's just been like my face in general. I've always been told like my whole life, even before I started wearing a crap ton of makeup that I'm, I have a really pretty face. And once I started to feel insecure about that, I was like, well, what do I have left if I'm gonna gain weight and now my face isn't gonna look the way that I feel like it should. I seriously think a big thing that kind of changed my perception of this whole thing has been this no buy, you know, me focusing on other aspects of my beauty or whatever, plus unfollowing so many of the accounts that I was unfollowing really changed it for me. When it comes to beauty accounts that I follow, they are um, accounts ran by professional makeup artists who tend to work on models. The thing about models that I love is that they all look different. Like they all have different features. They have flaws and some of those flaws are what makes them the most interesting and unique to look at. Now that I've kind of removed all that super hyper, you know what I'm talking about when people just be going through the gigs with their, uh, the work they're getting done on top of the massive amount of makeup that they're wearing. Exposing myself to different types of beauty has just changed the way I see things. And now I just really love to see real people. Anyway, I had to turn the camera off to do my hair. I'm actually wearing a robe right now. I was gonna change for like the intro and outro, but I don't think I'm going to anymore because literally all I'm gonna do is turn the camera off and start editing. So glamorous, my life, let me tell you. This is the Charlotte Tilbury chic to cheek to chic swish and pop first love br first love blush. It looks like a boob, doesn't it? Every time I see it, that's all I see is a boob. But anyway, I know I've been talking about a lot of the same things over and over again this year. It's just been a very eye-opening year for me. I just see things differently and I'm just constantly curious about whether anybody else has kind of noticed any of the same things I've noticed or if you guys have ever struggle with some of the things that I've been struggling with. I'm so interested in hearing from you guys about what you think about all of this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner. A lot of Charlotte Tilbury in this video, but you guys know she is my redheaded British fairy glam mother. Love her so much. This is Tom Ford All Mine Lipstick. And this is Buxom, I need glasses, Brooke lip gloss. All right guys, this is the finished look. Definitely not something you've never seen before, but I just wanna hang out and talk to you guys. The funny thing is I actually had a lot of other things that I meant to talk about and somehow never got to. So another time, I guess. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.